And I saw George Clooney's movie yesterday up in the air. Oh, what the fuck were you doing seeing that? Because uh, there's a buzz on the movie. What? Yeah. Isn't it a chick flick? I don't I don't know. Dude. I don't think it is a chick flick. I don't know what it was. Did your vagina itch during it? <laughs> <laughs> it was a chick flick. It was it, on Rotten Tomatoes it's getting like ninety six percent positive. Stop it. And I don't I don't I don't know if really? I like the movie. I don't I don't I don't know what I, I saw. Positive. What? I don't know what I saw. What did you what did you see? Maybe you could read the synopsis after the break. I'm trying to figure out That's... this movie. Because yeah, I'm thinking, and Roland even is. Uh, he wrote me like, "Oh, the oh, I saw Roland. up in the air. I love this movie. George Clooney should win an Oscar." Blah blah blah. And he was the he was the final straw where I said, "Okay, I'm going to go see this stupid movie I'll that people check are talking it out. about." And I went yesterday, and I I don't I don't no, I, I don't I, I don't know what I saw. I uh, he's a guy that spends a lot of time traveling. Yeah, that's all I saw in the um in and the he, commercial for it. And he gets off on having all sorts of status. What do you mean status? Travel status. Like like frequent flyer miles? All that stuff. Like Jimmy? All that stuff. <laughs> down to the hotels and what they offer and oh. knows how to pack, knows how to go through security. There was one funny scene where there's a security line and he figures out which line to go on and he, he chose the Asians because they pack light and they're very uh, efficient. <laughs> All right. But he showed like the the family with the stroller, they showed the uh the five guys that could have looked like they were Muslims who uh, that would be pulled out of line. Who put the movie out? I don't know. Like who's Hopefully not Lionsgate. Their big director. I, I, hope, it's I hope it's not Lionsgate, Lionsgate either. Believe me. I don't want to be on D-boy shit list. No. Man. You guys want to hear an interesting story about travel? I uh I have to leave today to go to Los Angeles and uh yes. I normally would mm -hmm. pack my overnight bag, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but because I'm going to be doing Wednesday and Friday on the Jalen show, uh huh, uh -huh. and then going to Kansas City Saturday, I had to pack my my bag that goes through security. So it's going to be a longer travel. Than <laughs> <laughs> What's worse than somebody's <laughs> fucking travel stories? Oh, they're terrible. They're <laughs> never good unless no. I got blown in the toilet <laughs> no. by a fucking stewardess. <laughs> They're awful. No one gives a shit about up in the air, so we can move on from that. But I, I, I do want to defend myself. I don't think it's a chick flick. Uh, it's, a, it's a very mon It's just a very blah movie. I don't know why. It, I don't know why the reviewers love this movie so much. Because you, know? you just said it. It's a blah movie, and they're That's, blah people. From what I saw, it looked like him hooking up with some chick and talking like in that chick flick romantic comedy kind of way. Boy, does that have a, a bit of a twist. Oh, does it? That I did not see coming, my friend. Oh, okay. I'll yeah. say that much. Yeah. Maybe say maybe that, that makes it better. You're not going to see this movie. Yeah. Jimmy won't see this movie. I'll see it. You'd be surprised what I'll see. Jimmy might see this movie on a flight or something. I uh, I don't mind a, a Clooney movie every so often, uh, even uh, his stupid ones. But um, if this isn't a chick flick, I will see it. I don't. I, I, <laughs> but if it is, oh boy, you'll have held back. Mm, I don't oh know. Oh boy, I don't you're, know. You're vouch, you're vouch, I really don't know. You vouch for this movie. I, I, you vouch for it. Look, man, I can see a chick <laughs> flick. By the way, I don't care. But yeah. I, I, I don't know if this is a chick no. flick. I just hate. I chick don't search flicks. out chick flicks, but if there's one that's, uh, you know, what the fuck? I just can't see this shit. Them, they're so dull, so incredibly dull. Oh. What is that goddamn movie that's out now with that fucking bore, Hugh Grant? Oh, Hugh is he the worst? <laughs> He's the worst. There is not one movie with that guy in it that I could sit through. He is a bore. He's a devil make hair British boy. What a dullard. Just the 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 <laughs> most dull fucking movies he's in. Have you heard about the Morgans? Have you heard about the Morgans? With him and Sarah Jessica Parker. Sarah Jessica Parker and Hugh Grant. Oh joy! Let me run out and see this one. You are absolutely correct. Was he ever in a movie that a guy cared about? No. Um, there isn't one movie this guy was in that wasn't just a crashing bore. Here's one for you. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely a chick flick. Yeah. You got Steve Martin. Oh, God. You got that Meryl Streep. Oh, fuck. Who's won a few awards. Yep. The Christmas thing. Alec Baldwin. Alec that's, Baldwin. That's the conflict. Because Alec Baldwin is hilarious in everything he fucking does. But th he is definitely in a chick flick. Basically, he gets a divorce. He's with a young chippy. Yeah. He marries the young chippy. 
and now he's uh, cheating on the young chippy with his ex-wife. If if that doesn't say chick flick, oh, I auditioned yeah. for that movie. Did you really? Yeah, that was the one. Remember, I came in. Were you supposed to be Alec Baldwin? No, Meryl Streep. <laughs> no, I auditioned for the part of a hospital doctor. It was one of the worst auditions I've ever done. I was so bad that I was like, ah, can I can I uh, redo that? And she's like, no, 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 we'll just start it from in there. It was so bad. They just oh, knew. Dude, God. I was atrocious. You, were, you wanted to be a doctor in a show? That, no, that, that was just the audition. And, you know, oh. and I'm like, Jonathan, I'm not a fucking hospital, a uh, hotel doctor. I'm sorry, hotel doctor. Uh. I'm like, that's not me. No one will buy that. That Everyone sucks. else in the audition room was all hotel doctory, older men with ties, and doctory. a shirt on. Doctory. <laughs> I was terrible. Just at that. a bad audition to go on. <laughs> Abysmal. Well, what do you do? Because Alec Baldwin's great. Do you go and see that movie because Alec Baldwin? Mm. Mm. I, I, you don't sit through that. No, I don't think so either. You don't sit through that. I enjoyed. Crap. I enjoyed Alec Baldwin in the uh, in the preview. Smug Steve Martin, and you know with his oh, that stupid look on his face. Yeah. And another one they had last night as one of the previews was uh, Eli with Denzel Washington. And what is that? Another post a pop a pop a lip. <laughs> <laughs> one of those. One of those post the world has ended movies. What ha like what happened uh, to the world in this one? I don't know. Meteor, radiation, Denzel Washington. Bombs. It's called Eli. He's got some book. Some uh -huh. book that everybody wants. Happy and he, endings? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he fights him off with, like, karate. Oh, kirate. Kirate. I remember... And uh, some cool fucking yes. weaponry. Yes. And this is like, uh, you know, it's almost like Mad Max. Mm -hmm. A lot of Mad Max shit going on in that movie. It looks pretty cool, though. I do, uh, I do remember hearing something about that. It's called Eli. It's coming out soon. Hugh Grant in nine months was watchable. That's the only no. movie. No! That's Puddle of AIDS. No, nothing with Hugh Grant in it was... Ever any good. Stephen S. from Bayshore. What's uh, Hugh Grant's new boring movie? Four naps and a coma? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking guys battling it out. It's up in the it's air. late night talk show. Stop. Up. Jimmy, nice segue. Oh, I'm just saying. I heard your segue. I didn't mean to. Uh, up in the air, yes. Jimmy tweeted that he saw Up in the Air and hated it. Uh, now, I could tell just from the trailer that this movie... But it was a you piece see of some shit. Of these movies. You said no, the no, same no. thing about Avatar. No, no, no. Yet. I didn't say about Avatar. Never said that. I said no, I don't, you don't think understand. Avatar deserves right. to be in the position it's in, even right. though I haven't seen it. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> and up in the air, it's like watching any other movie trailer that I could look you at could, and go, I will never see this movie because it just looks like a bucket of of of. A romantic comedy shit. It's a fucking chick flick. Yay! See, I could tell. It's a. I didn't know it was a comedy until there's a scene where George Clooney falls in the lake. It's a fucking <laughs> hunk of shit. And I tweeted that it was. I couldn't believe it got ninety percent. Or that there's Oscar considerations it's, for this the film. The reviews are ridiculous on this movie. Yeah, Clooney's winning awards. It's. Dunk! I, I saw Up in the Air about a month ago, and I talked about it on the show, and people were beating me up. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Am I missing out on something? And now Jimmy's with me, thank he's God. He's a motivational speaker. His me well, no, I didn't he's even not a motivate. He does that on the side. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's like his side is a mo He has the fucking... It's some backpack speak. Empty your back. It's a meaningless, pointless fucking side story. You didn't like his take on the motivational speech? It was garbage. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's an anticlimactic uh, he movie. He basically talks about a backpack, Ann, and like, you know, you got too much in your backpack, so you got to lighten the load Empty your, your backpack. backpack. It's like, shut up. Who fucking can we get it? You're the eligible Arabic-looking bachelor. You're in hotels a lot. <laughs> Fuck you and your fucking frequent flyer status. The whole movie was a commercial for American Airlines and how great the Admiral's Club is and how great Hilton Hotel. It was in really? the product it placement was in this movie. It was one big fucking commercial. For you idiots that thought this was a work of See, art. Admiral Club and Hilton, j just in the trailer. The fucking embarrassing product placement in this in this movie. And that fucking girl who played the chick that he fucks uh, in a hotel, <laughs> they have like this really horrible flirty scene where they're sitting there, and you know, she's like a guy. She even walks like a guy to prove that she's a business gal. And they're sitting there <laughs> with their cards, and they're comparing cards in the hotel. Ah, you have an American Express plan. Ah, you have the Hilton Honor card. Yeah, but I only go with this. And it was fucking they were, awful. They were bragging by how many cards they got and which, yeah, yeah. Had, which person had the better cards and stuff flirty scene. from all their traveling around the United States. Of America, but George Clooney's life is very empty. He, plays, he lives his life on the road, Anthony. He, when he goes home, he goes home to an empty apartment. Boy, if that doesn't tell you a lot about his character. Yes, and just in case we didn't know. What's the problem there? 
has, he has no furniture in his apartment when he does you know, go home every once in a while. He plays a guy who uh, goes around and fires people for a living. He's one of these people that the company will hire him when they don't have the balls to fire somebody, and he's a motivational speaker on the side. So his job is to go there and fire them. And the, the basic push of the story is he's always on the road, and his company wants to cut down on his travel because he wants to become one of the 10 million mile people on American Airlines where Which, you get like a lifetime executive club and, status or whatever the fuck it is. And it's been a while. How many people got that status? Seven, including him, because he gets yes. it at the end of the movie. So I hope I blow it for you. <laughs> Who gives a shit? And you get <laughs> and you get to fuck. Here's your big prize. You get to meet this fucking cheese dick in a mustache who works for American that's, Airlines. That's, what's his name? Who? I always forget his name. He was the fucking father in uh, Mask. Oh, Sam Elliott. Yeah, exactly. Sam Elliott. Oh, Sam Elliott? So yeah, with a big fucking uh, Sam Elliott. mustache. Yeah, he's so stupid. And uh, it's everything you thought it would be. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Everything you all thought it would be. It was one attempt at a moment after another. I didn't give a shit about it. Then there was the wedding scene. It was a whole bunch of rotten, boring stories thrown into one long, rotten, boring story. And uh, I didn't even the firing montage about the people they were firing. Mm -hmm. They were interesting, uh, you know, to see the people getting fired. This is fucking fruity Hollywood trying to show the working class and the fired people in America how in touch with you they really are. God. How you're not being overlooked. God bless you, Jimmy. It was shit. I was like, what is the big deal about this dumb movie? It, and the girl who played the side, the the new young girl with the overacting awkward girl with Eddie Munster hair, and she was like, you know, the, oh, you know, a relationship is. Supposedly, her acting was terrible. She might be good in Twilight. She was awful in this. Yeah, she's ugly too. That's not. I guess know. she was supposed to be a plain Jane type. But it was the it was the always oh, the forced awkward girl, the overacting awkward girl. It was just awful. Mm -hmm. And uh, people that were trashing me on Twitter for smashing this movie. They were trashing you? A, a bunch of these fucking man pussies thought it was great. But feel free to call what? in and defend it if I, you want. I wow. It stunk. Uh, let's say hi to Jason in Virginia. Jason. Hey, boys. Hi, Jason. Um, I'm pretty sure this movie was done in the 80s, and it was done right the first time, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Wow. That sounds just like Del Griffith. Well, it was a comedy. I mean, that was, that was actually a real comedy. This was, this was exactly what critics like. It was a soft, non-threatening, romantic comedy that didn't offend any of their sacred cows or sensibilities. That's why critics love this hunk of shit. Terrible movie. Up in the air. Yeah, it was. It wasn't good. Danny McBride was fun. I will it, not though. see. Even it. Danny McBride couldn't do it. Was 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 there was no reason for him to be in that movie. He plays a, a fucking groom. Well, yeah, because like his, I don't know. George Clooney goes home for his uh, niece's wedding or something. His sister, sister's <clears throat> what's sister's the movie? kid's wedding? What's the movie poster? No, his sister's wedding. What's the movie poster? Sister's look like? wedding. You sure? Yeah, it was his younger sister. Okay. And I didn't give a shit about the wedding or the or the conflict that 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 Clooney helps them out of and the fucking dumb older sisters of the thing and she goes dramatically welcome home oh shut up bitch <laughs> yeah, the guy goes home for maybe 10 days a year his life is on the road don't like it. it was dude it was enraging and i'll say this for my girlfriend she fucking didn't want to watch it and she despised it before i did yeah. which was one minute into it wow we hated this movie and the music was terrible and you got all the way to the end even though you hated it well i think if i'm gonna bash it i should see the whole thing wow yeah. fucking hell. so uh the music in it was unlistenable I don't know if you uh, What was the music in it? Fucking... I don't remember any of the songs now. Exactly. I'm trying to think. Yeah. It stunk. And the montage of uh, of him looking down at individual cities. <laughs> Dude, it was so embarrassing uh, that... Oh, they did that? Oh, yeah. This <laughs> was a commercial, a product placement commercial for Hilton and American Airlines. And there's one line where they're talking about uh, the cards going back and forth. And she said something about, oh, you always fly the same. And he goes, well, there's no weakness in loyalty or whatever. Oh. He gave, like, some company line. He's like, oh, come on, man. Did you, see the tw did you see the twist coming? Uh, yes. Uh, from about five minutes into the movie, I said to my girlfriend. Really? Absolutely, I saw it coming. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. they telegraphed that from 300 miles away. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, no, a heartbreak is coming. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> I heard. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to protect for the listeners because we you spoil know. way too many movies. I fucking, I, I, fucking, I fucking blew it in my Say Now message, the ending. Good. Yeah. Let's yeah. say hi to Johnny Welcome. Death. Johnny Death. Hey, you know, there's not much left to say because Jimmy just covered everything. I saw it with three friends and three chicks, and the chicks hated it even worse than we did. It's a chick oh, flick. Geez. No, but the, no. The, the women hated it as yeah. well, which is, which is kind of refreshing, man. Because uh, you'd think the women would just eat up that crap. And they didn't, and for a movie called Up in the Air, I felt, oh, God, this was bad, down in the fucking dumps afterwards. 
By the end of the movie, I, I was thinking to myself, what was the point of this movie? Like, I don't really understand. Was there a hidden message? What, what were they trying to accomplish that, that is getting 90 plus, 90 percent plus reviews on uh, Rotten Tomatoes? If they were trying. I'm sorry, no, but I think that pissed me off more than anything else. What? Was why is this film in the top five, in the top 10%? And then you on get, every fucking list. But then you get mad. You're like, what? I guess I just don't get it, man. Man. It. The guy had no life and never is going to. But it didn't Boy. matter. Fuck him. And, and, and uh, all those people that they were firing. I just, the movie should have been more about them. I just didn't feel anything for them. I didn't feel anything for his plight. I didn't feel anything for the new corporate awkward girl, the phony awkward girl that oh. Hollywood loves. They love the hot I'm way too hot to be awkward, but I'm phonally pretending to be awkward. They love the fucking phony nerd image in this shitty town. How about getting a real ugly girl to play that part? Get a real fucking nerd. It was like shallow hell. They couldn't make a statement about beauty unless they had fucking stupid Gwyneth Paltrow make it. Get me a fucking fat pig to make this statement, you shallow cunts. They went as ugly, quote Carlin. They went as, ugly as they could. You know what I mean? Yeah, they if they, if, 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 you can't go too they ugly go in too Hollywood. Ugly. No, no. So no. I feel sorry for the they actresses where up. they go, you're you're just ugly enough. You want, like, precious in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, let Steve Buscemi make a statement about beauty. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of chicks love Steve Buscemi. You like uh, Jason Bateman as the corporate douche boss? He was all right. No. I mean, and, and Galifianakis had, like, one scene. They were fine. Well, I mean, had, uh, you know. Yeah, he was a non-factor, really. I mean, his scene was funny. He was one of the guys yeah. that got fired. He was okay. Oh, he did a good job with it. Do. Huh? Before I punch out, I'd just like to say, all they needed to do was fire the audience during the first five minutes of that movie. I just oh, thought, oh. dude, I didn't know it was a comedy. It was, it was, it was everything I hate in a movie. It was like attempting second, to have a comedy. message and attempting to have a bunch of, a bunch of. I despise lighthearted romps. <laughs> I loathe them. And uh, just uh, they, what they, about they, the montage where Clooney's falling for her, taking her back oh. to his high school and showing? Oh, where they break into the high school and walk around and you're supposed no. to feel something. No, yeah. you're no. and you're supposed oh, yeah. to feel something for oh, this yeah. guy. Like, wow, he's finally getting in touch with values. Yeah. Oh, fuck him and his school, he and finally, fuck that masculine broad he was hitting on. He finally found someone to trust. <laughs> He's going to take her to his old high school. Exactly. And they're making out where he made out with girls 30 years earlier. Exactly. And then they're watching basketball practice, and nobody notices why the two 50-year-olds are watching a bunch of high school students practice. Right. She's probably whispering in his ear how she's going to fuck the black center. He's a cuckold. It was a terrible movie, man. I hated it. It, was, it didn't move me at all. There was one anticlimax after another. It was trying so hard to have moments, and it failed on every front. I agree. Oh, wow. Dude, That's you, you fucking so great. Right on. What's that? Best review of the year, little Jimmy. Thank you. Best yeah, I'm with Jimmy on this one. Big Horrendous time. movie. Big time on, on it with Jimmy. Uh, Dude, it made me angry. I love movie critic Jimmy. <laughs> I would no, love to but, do that for a living. But you know what? That was very accurate. That's very accurate. Oh, a few funny lines in there. But it was... You didn't. I, there was no point to the movie. Once they did the when the Hollywood flirt with a couple flirts, and then after they fucked the next morning, Clooney and her, uh, where are you going to be? And they both, oh, they're like, they're both sitting across from each other at a desk, and they both open their exact same size uh, laptops, and the backs of the laptops meet, and then, uh, 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 Des Moines, not busy that way. Uh, oh, the two busy uh, people connecting. You, no one interacts like that. You're missing one detail, Jimmy. Uh, what? She's wearing his shirt in the morning. Oh, I didn't catch that. <laughs> oh, God. That damn. old guy. It's not surprising. She was fucking masculine. Hey, wow, well, there's a chick. That travels just like the boys. <laughs> hey, I got my Amex black card. Hey, I got my uh, Hilton Honors card. And they continually show him walking to the first class line and zipping ahead of everyone. And they continually show him checking into the Hilton's Honors thing, zipping ahead of everyone. And this one scene, you fucking, you product whore fucking movie where there's a people online at the Hilton and he zips ahead of them and the girl goes, Hey, what about us? And he goes, Well, I'm an honors member. I check in first. That's a commercial. All that of was. I'm George of Clooney for Hilton's of course. Honor. It was a way to get money from fuck. I guarantee you they got money from Hilton and American Airlines. Yeah. Well, that's what they do now. But, but do, I don't mind some product placement. That's not placement. even placement. That is an endorsement. It was worse than fucking uh, <laughs> that Hanks movie with FedEx. That embarrassing commercial. Oh, fuck. Remember that? And oh, let, yeah. Well, I, I wanted the same studio did those. And, and How what, was that bad, though? Because their plane crashed. <laughs> but it was about FedEx and about... Uh, you know, just about how great it was. and he, he, the, all, Watch the beginning of that Hanks. What's that Hanks movie? 
Castaway. 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 All the things that are said about MX that are positive. Watch really? the beginning of that fucking movie. You're going to want to vomit when you're looking for it. And, a plane crash. And one last thing. <laughs> Everyone was like, what about her ass? Oh, look at her ass. Because there was a, a scene where... Oh, that was good if it was hers. It wasn't. It was a stunt ass that came out in the press. Yeah? Oh, that her ass doesn't look like that. They Aniston's? Bring... No, they had to bring in a stunt ass. <laughs> Aniston was not... Who, who was, was the... Aniston's ass that they I... show? Was that it? <laughs> just sna- just smell a vision Scratch and sniff the screen. <laughs> uh, Victor, where do you got, buddy? Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? Hey. Hey, look, I get and understand your show, but Jimmy is an inspiring actor, and I would think with Hollywood being a kiss-ass place that it is, I would not be trashing the director, even though I know the movie sucks. I mean, I didn't even see it, but listening to Jimmy, you know, I don't even want to see it. I don't know who the thing. director is. Well... Uh, well, he probably knows who you are now, though. Who cares? Nah, they don't care, dude. Yeah, Jimmy's not going to sell out. Man! My acting is Whatever. fucking mediocre to awful to begin with. What am I going to do? Be in a movie with Clooney? He is a good actor. Does he? Did he do a, a nice job in this? Yes, he was good. But who gives a shit? There was a boring movie, and I'm not a fucking great actor. I'm a comic. Let's go to Andy in Cleveland. Andy. Yeah, uh, actually, I had a double torture seeing this movie because I had to sit through the preview of Sex in the City 2. <laughs> Oh, yeah. fuck no. Yeah. Is that my out? Wife, my, wife hit, my wife hit me in the arm because I said I mean, the preview, loudly, yeah. now I know why the popcorn comes in bags and proceeded to vomit, fake vomit, <laughs> into the popcorn. Hey, you got to go one then, Find my the friend. trailer, dude. Find the new Sex in uh, the City 2 yeah, we'll trailer. Go. We got to hit that one up if we're talking movies. <laughs> oh, I wonder what it's about. Oh, here it Speaking is. Speaking of up in the air. Come on, let's get some volume. All right, uh, hold on one second, though, Danny. Uh, what do you want no. to say, Andy, before we let you go? Uh, well, the, the, other, the only fascinating thing about the movie, the only good thing, was watching the firing scenes. Because on the XM like, movie uh, channel, they had an interview with the director, and he said they actually interviewed people who had been fired in this town where they, sh- they shot most of the movie. And if you watch some of them, they're so nervous just talking about the situation of being fired. The one woman actually broke into hives and stop breathing in her interview, and you can see her on in the film, like her neck just just totally like a fucking strawberry patch. She just goes up, and she can't even get through the the, the concept of having to. Act well, out were those fighting. real people that had been fired? That's what he's saying. So they yeah. weren't acting. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, but good, good. If, one if, good they had, if they had balls, they would have fired people for the movie. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. We're going to check out the yeah, Sex in the City trailer and then get back to your phone calls because oh. now everybody is fired up about Up in the Air, oh. a movie that George Clooney might win an Oscar for. Oh. He's never going to win it, by the way. Here we go. Where's the music? Come on, right? Starts with the music? It's boofering. Come on. Come on. This summer, get ready. To carry on the way it's yeah. spelled. It. Oh no! Ah! Ah! The opening shot of her coming out of a fucking building, a, a stall. Yeah. <laughs> she, she walks out of a building and somebody asks to ride her through Central Park for fifty bucks. In a million years, and just when you think you've seen it all, it hits you. You haven't seen anything yet. The friendship, the fun, the fashion. Get carried away. What a dog. Far away. Oh, they're in Egypt. They're... Oh, stop it. Just stop this. Sex in the City 2. Sometimes you just have to get away with the girls. I, I hope Al-Qaeda gets them and cuts their heads off. Now, Anthony. Yay! Yeah, they're walking through Egypt. I hope they go. I hope in the opening scene, they walk into a pyramid and a rock falls and they suffocate. And then the entire rest of the movie is the Egyptian government trying to figure out how these trespassers got in their land. <laughs> and it's a whole movie about some fucking legal battle. Yes, again, it has nothing to do with them. How, the first minute of the movie, they get horribly killed. Yeah. <laughs> and then they fucking they die of suffocation, and at the end of the movie, there's like a, a big court scene going on, and they're dragging four bodies with white covers on them out of the fucking <laughs> crypt, and they wind up finding another king's tomb thanks to them, <laughs> those nosy whores. <laughs> <laughs> well, they actually think that she's a mummy, uh, king, king, uh, horse of phoresis. 
the whole movie, the Egyptians are trying to ride Sarah Jessica Parker. They think she's a camel. She has to keep convincing them, I'm not a camel. I'm not a camel. I'm not a camel. I fucked a camel once. Speaking of camel cock. On film. We weren't talking about camel cock, you fucking Uh, whore. And she finally convinced them she's not a camel and then she accidentally spits on their windshield. (laughs) Speaking of spitting. (laughs) All right, we get it. Uh, You're a slut. Who the fuck? Fuck, and that movie will do just great. Yeah, because dumb bitches will fucking go see it. Yuck. Uh, let me see. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, let's go to Matt in Houston. Matt in Houston. Hey, hey guys. Uh, my chick and I saw this movie, and we're like, "Wow, the chicken. woman who plays the lead is uh, pretty attractive for an older broad." Turns out she was born in 1973. What? She was like 34, 35 when that movie was filmed. No look it up. way. Oh. Are you serious? Uh, George yeah. Clooney's love interest through the whole movie. She does look really? like she's pushing 50, and this guy's trying to tell me that she's actually 35, 36 in real life. I really felt bad for a poor guy like Clooney, flying, flying first class all over the country and getting pussy. Wow, that's terrible. <laughs> poor good-looking Clooney with his big eyebrows. <laughs> Enough with him. Looks like the no. fucking king of Egypt. Fucking creep. Enough with him. God almighty. How do you supposed to feel bad for that guy? Ah, he's finally going to find love with his 10 million first class miles. <laughs> Shut up, cunt. Let's go to Uncle Luke. <laughs> Show me a guy that looks like the father from Mork and Mindy, flying coach. <laughs> <laughs> Show me Conrad Janist trying to get fucking pussy in Oklahoma somewhere. <laughs> then you got a story. Yeah. Uncle Luke. Hey, what's up, boys? Hey. Hey, I, you know, it took a while to get going, but... I didn't get into it, and I kind of liked it, but, like, the end, they, they fucked up the ending so bad. Like, it, it ended, like, three times, and it had a perfect time to end it, and I was like, please end. And it didn't. It just kept going. I was like, fuck, man. It was so close. I don't know. Well, Hollywood just, they, they just wimp out with these mainstream movies. In, in Crazy Heart, fucking Jeff Bridges should have been dead at the end of the movie. But they had to cop that oh, out, too. Didn't. We need more people to see the movie, then we'll discuss that one next. He just blew it. I nah, not really. <laughs> not really. I, 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 <laughs> who gives a shit? No, no. Nah, tr- ah, give me a few more days, and then we'll talk about Crazy Heart. Maybe a few more people are going to see it. But they, I, de- I mean, you want to talk about copping out. They've totally copped out in Crazy Heart. All right. I'm just trying to think of All uh, right. Like what could have happened there. What? At the end. Of what? Copping out, Crazy Heart. Well, I didn't say it, but I'm just trying to figure. It, it, I mean, it's a it's a pretty good movie. Yeah, to be honest with you. it's not bad. I mean, it's it's a little slow, but that fucking Jeff Bridges knows how to act. That it's fucking guy movies. knows how to act. Holy shit! Go see Crazy Heart, Jimmy, I will. Yeah, and then we'll discuss it. And then you guys start getting trailers. Discuss. You guys discuss. start getting uh, 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 some uh, copies. Some copies. I mean, yeah, I'm working on it. Uh, Screeners. Let's say hi to Blake in Wisconsin, Blake. But I would never see that fucking George Clooney piece of shit. I knew right away I am not fucking seeing that. But some of these movies are worth seeing just for the show, so I you can beat the even shit out of them. I can't sit through. I would. I would fuck. I couldn't I, sit through it. Honestly, if if we didn't have a radio show, I wouldn't see half the stuff I do. But then you, yeah. you see it, so you can beat the shit out of it. Uh-huh. Blake, what do you got, buddy? Hey, I was just uh, calling about Jim's comment about putting uh, uh, real ugly people in movies. Um, I just spent the weekend at the Mall of America. I could see ugly people anywhere I go. I'm paying money to see pretty people. There's reality TV stars all over. Really, Sarah Jessica Parker is about my limit to ugly people that I can deal well, with. Well, if you're paying money to see pretty people, then, you're, then, then your level of entertainment is obviously what it is. Then don't ever no, belt... If you I want to pay that. to see I mean, pretty I people... I don't want to go see ugly people at the movie theater, dude. It's, so you I enjoy looking at George Clooney on the big screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, then you want a, a fucking bullshit message given to you. By really good-looking people pretending to understand the plight of someone who doesn't get laid, or you know, come on, stop. No, you're, you're right, uh, Glenn Paltrow. It was uh, that was a clutch fuck, but uh, I don't know. I, I like Anne Hathaway. All right. I'm man. not saying I don't like Anne Hathaway, and I don't even say good-looking people shouldn't be in movies, but I'm just sick and tired of, of, of supposed to feel sorry for these people. You know, I don't feel sorry for any. Look at the cast of Cuckoo's Nest. If they cast that movie today, every one of those fucking mental patients, they would right. never cast yeah. Danny DeVito. They would never cast any of these. They would all be good looking, you know, uh, fucking sulky, unshaven Hollywood types. Bunch of uh, shit. The people getting well, fired and up like, in the air, that was, that was some good shit. Yeah, they were all ugly. They were all ugly, <laughs> I sad individuals. 
All right, sir. Thank you. We're going to move on. There's too much going on here right now. We'll go to Mike in Florida. Mike. Hey, Mike. I saw a book of Eli. Hey guys, a book of Eli. I saw it this weekend. I have, have you guys seen it yet? No, I'm not. I, it's terrible. It is, huh? Is it getting yeah, bad I, reviews? I think it is no. getting bad reviews. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, there's nothing even to spoil about it except for one thing: whether Could, um, I don't know whether he's blind or not. No, I can't figure that the out. book of Eli. I got confused because there's a movie out. Or was out or coming out soon called The Road, which was an amazing. that too. The Road was an amazing book. I was looking forward to the fucking movie. Omar from The Wires in it. Oh yeah. And uh, I never saw this. It never hit my theaters. And I live in New York City. Where the fuck was this movie being shown? Uh, it was on my computer. Is where I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone it does. Good. It was good. It was depressing. They did a good job giving you a feel for the post-apocalyptic world without spending a lot of money. Right. So I give him credit for that, but, I mean, it was kind of depressing, but it, uh, it was a lot better than Book of Eli. I never give credit to a, a studio for doing something on a low budget. I don't care how much it costs. <laughs> isn't, isn't that the director doing that, though, being able to be creative enough to do that? No, nah, it's the studio also. If you have a, a, a cap on spending, then you have to. Oh, then fuck the studio, because there, there, there were good people in that movie. So It was like, what was a good know. movie? Was that uh, Stephen King movie that uh, Frank something? Uh, d- d- remember the guy came in, the director came in to promote it about the... Uh, yeah, the uh, he came in and the movie was about the uh, the the fog that the came. Mist. The mist. Oh, the mist. Oh, the mist. Oh, the the, mist. That the, was a good movie. The movie was even darker than the book, but the fucking the, the budget was low and the monsters were. Oh, it actually yeah, looked like yeah. a guy with monster gloves on. It was it terrible. It really is his movies. They cannot. Hey, out, guys, love you. Right, they man. can't make the monsters look good. No, in any one of his movies. I don't get it. Fuck, that was a good review on. Up in the air. I wanted more people who disagreed with me to call in because they were on Twitter, so I don't no. mind listening to them. Yeah, I got no. beat up a little bit when I first started talking. Yeah, about yeah. That. When you first, if I recall, when you, you like, first you, you just don't about get that, it, man. No, when I I first remember you saw it and started talking about it. I think you get, were giving it some kudos, my friend. I don't think so. Was Might I? have to pull the clip and hang you out to dry. I got it. I got it. I just didn't want to hear from Tony. For good stuff for once, instead of just killing me all the time. No, no. I'm trying to think if I did now. I'm just saying you might have gone. It was good, but I I was trying. I don't know. I was maybe I didn't I don't go. Remember. I didn't go all in like uh, Jimmy did. That's for sure. I but I definitely had problems. Jimmy apparently with loved. I think it. what I said in. I think I really did say my main point about up in the air was what was the point of this movie? Oh yeah. And then no people were like you don't get it, man. You don't get it, man. Ugh. Mm. Just be pussy whipped and go to a fucking chick flick and, exactly. and, and like it because you have to. Let's go to Brendan in Ohio. Brendan. Brendan. Hey, Morton. Hi, Brendan. Hey, Danny. Uh, I love everything you do, man. You're great. I was uh, just wondering if uh, working with George Clooney is as good as everybody says it is or if he's, uh, if he's kind of a douchebag. No, he was he was totally cool. You know that that movie up in the air that I did with him. I never had met him before. I did, you know, and I literally walked Holy onto the set. Sh- I forgot, forgot you were in that. In yeah. I love that fucking fucking movie. Oscar that nominated movie. Huh? I forgot all about that. We haven't talked to you uh, since then. No, that, that was, was a, a uh, great. How was, was that experience? It was nuts. I mean, like with guys like Clooney, like I'd never met him before. I just see him on TV and right. You walk onto the set and they're like, "All right, yeah, we're like, ready oh. for your scene with Mr. Clooney," and you just have to sit down and you know it's kind of hard to. To get into the deal, but you got to have to. You have to act confident. Like, yeah, I'm used to doing scenes with Clooney. This isn't a big deal. Just kind of roll with it. Are you almost like I've, I've been in situations where I'm almost so nervous and like the consequences are. I'm so overwhelmed that you click in and do okay. It's it's yeah. almost like it's so big that you're fine with it. Yeah, like that. That scene is where uh, the first scene I did with him was where he's like talking me into getting married. Like I've mm-hmm. walked out of mm-hmm. my marriage, and so there's a lot of nervous, you know, nervous ticks in that scene, and that was just real. That was just me really being nervous. Just being there. nervous, <laughs> acting in front of Clooney. Wow, did you blow any up. takes? Uh, I didn't. I, I hope I didn't. I don't think I did. Yeah, I'm I'm hard to crack in scenes. I don't laugh. I don't fuck around. Oh, really? I'm a machine. Really? Yeah. I mean, like, miss a line, you never forget a line? No, that's amateur shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I forgot about Up in the Air. Jeez. It's a great movie. I forgot the lines. Huh? You forgot <laughs> lines, Jimmy? In front of who, though? Whoever was looking. I mean, I'm not going to very big <laughs> projects. Body. If it's yes. in front of us, who the cares? The rest of the people in community theater. <laughs> no, I just, uh, it's humiliating. In front of who, though? Um, Anyone big that we know? No. Louis C.K.? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. Jimmy's downplaying okay. it. Well, that's the beauty of improv too. Is like if you if you forget a line, just throw in something else, and then it just looks like you just made a choice as opposed to that you fucked ah. up. Yeah. And what do you do with your hands? 
Just kind of just do this. You do like robot you hands. You do the yeah. robot hands. Yeah. Just do this over and hey. over. Hey, <laughs> I never know what to do. I, that's the big thing with me and every actor I talk to is when I act, I never have to do it with my hands. So I found pop locking helps. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Pop lock. It's real natural. It's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Uh, what are you gonna do? So what are you gonna do? Uh, you know what? Yeah, I should be in movies. Silly Goose writes, "You deserve an Oscar." What are you gonna do? You're gonna ruin it. Liar, so many liar, people, pants so many, on fire. I gotta acknowledge it. So many, so many people are r- calling me out right now. Saying that I loved Up in the Air. I guess uh, I guess we might have trashed that movie when it came out. You had me doubting for a second because <laughs> when you said it, I was like, oh, yeah, you were in that. We love that movie. And I went, wait, wait, wait. I was thinking to myself, wait, wait, hold on. Well, I, I definitely liked uh, Danny McBride in that movie. Well, who wouldn't? No, I really did. Yeah. I forgot that I... Uh, didn't like the movie. I actually forgot. I would love if we could actually, find that. I actually forgot that I, that I didn't like that movie. You should find. I'm, I wasn't even trying to play the role of he's in, so don't don't do that to yourself. Right. I, I I'm telling you, I forgot that I didn't like that movie. Is there a? Um... I'm telling you the truth now, because everyone thought you hated it. You you guys are pussies. Oh, real brave guys. You guys said up in the air sucked. Is there a way to, f- to find that? Yeah, I'm, I'm going through. I'm looking for. I, it. I right. would love to hear Ovi's take on it. <laughs> just moments after saying, and I quote, "I loved that movie," <laughs> but I wasn't trying to do a thing. Oh, I, I swear know. to you, no, I, I forgot that I didn't like that movie. I thought it was a different movie <laughs> when you were just saying how you loved it. I was like, "Is that a different movie with Clooney, I really, or is it the one where he's on the plane with the girl and the?" I really forgot. And what I was going to tell Danny McBride, his his role in that movie, it almost made it seem like he was part of another movie. Mm. You know what I mean? Because all of a sudden... So like, you're saying it was almost as if he was in a whole <laughs> different movie than that one. Meaning his movie was good. His movie was the good. the other movie was not so good. Right. As a matter of fact, let me, let me put it to you this way. Because most of the movie was in an airplane, an airport, or a hotel room. The next thing you know, Danny McBride's getting married in a small town. So it was it was disconnected from the rest of the movie. Let, let me explain <laughs> to you something. Uh, the... Your rant, originally, and I don't remember it uh, on de- uh, by details, uh, on uh, that movie, Up in the Air, mm-hmm. was so effective that I have not seen the movie ever, to this day? just based on your trashing it. I think it was more Jimmy that was trashing uh, it. Jimmy gave it a bit of a trashing, too. Be- I, think, I gave it a beating. I think Jimmy... I think I rode uh, Jimmy's back on that one because I yeah. really don't remember. That's yeah. why I, I think Jimmy might have sucked me into this one. I did forget oh, that boy. Danny was in it, and I do like Danny a lot. But I, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say I love the movie. I wouldn't trash it with him right here. Well, we did like very it. well, right? Some Oscar sure, nominations for an Oscar. and all that shit. So what do we know? But I really forgot that I, I almost liked ended the movie. my friendship with Lenny Marcus over recommending it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? No, it was terrible. <laughs> He's I right didn't there. see it. I'm sorry, Danny. Oh. He's looking right yeah, at us. Okay. What can I do? Well, Danny's a tremendous we, success. Yeah, we support yeah, him. Sure. Okay. So, Danny McBride, that's what we were talking about. Yes. His new movie looks like it's going to be terrific, and he was great yesterday. And, it was. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Up in the Air came up, because he was in that movie, and we forgot. And I went, oh, I love the- Oh, actually, we got the clip. Oh, okay. We make it very easy for everyone. <laughs> so, this is what happened yesterday with uh, Danny McBride. Just wondered if uh, working with George Clooney is as good as everybody says it is, or if he's a... Uh... If he's kind of a douchebag. No, he was he was totally cool. You know that that movie up in the air that I did with him. I never had met him before. I did you know, and I literally walked Holy onto the shit. set. I forgot, I forgot you were in that. In yeah. I Fuck that fucking, fucking movie. Oscar nominated movie. Good. Fucking liar. I forgot all about that. You haven't talked to you. Fucking liar. I forgot about <laughs> up in the air. Jeez, it's a great movie. You're a fucking liar. I, I didn't I didn't even believe what I was saying. I said it four movie. times. Yeah, it was really the worst I said sell it four ever. Times. Three, four times. Three or four times. I, I love that movie. So that's what I said yesterday. Wow. And you go back to um, <laughs> December 8th, 2009. <laughs> this is never good. Doesn't it suck? Everything is recorded. <laughs> A year and what? Three, four months ago. Uh, yeah. I said this. Uh, what do we got, Ann? So we got, uh, no one gives a shit about Up in the Air, so we can move on from that. <laughs> <laughs> right away, you just fucking trashed it. Right away, you trashed right out it. Of the box. Nobody gives a shit. Uh, nobody gives wow. a shit. <laughs> Sounds like your favorite flick. <laughs> <laughs> phony. You loved it. Nobody uh, gives it's a, a shit. Very mon- it's just a very blah movie. I don't know why, <laughs> I don't know why the reviewers love it. 
the fuck out of here. Well, you all loved it too, didn't you? Yeah, you don't know why the reviewers loved it. You loved it. The only thing I could say, that I've said it three or four times now, I don't remember not liking the movie when I said that yesterday. I just have no recollection I didn't enjoy this movie. I want to start over. Yeah, please. Uh, what do we got, Ann? So we got, uh, no one gives a shit about Up in the Air, so we can move on from that. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, mon it's just a very blah movie. I don't know why, it, I don't know why the reviewers love this movie so much. Because so, you just said it. It's a blah movie and they're blah people. From what I saw, it looked like him hooking up with some chick. You're not going to see this movie. Yeah. Jimmy won't see this movie. I'll see it. You'd be surprised what I'll see. Jimmy might see this movie on a flight or something. Wow. It's just a very blah movie. So Jimmy didn't see the movie at that point, and then a month later, I guess a month later, he saw Jimmy it, right? saw the movie and had this to say. And you were all in yesterday with the up in the air. You... No, I didn't say I liked it. I oh, knew I hated it? the movie, and I wouldn't have said I liked it, but I wouldn't have said oh. I hated it either. I was phony too by not saying I didn't like it. You just, but I just wasn't as despicably phony as you <laughs> by, by, by pr apparently praising it like it was Citizen Kane. <laughs> <laughs> That's why critics love this hunk of shit. <laughs> <laughs> You went right to it, didn't you? So this is, yeah, Jimmy, a month later, back in uh, 2010. That's why January. critics love this hunk of shit. Terrible movie. Up in the air. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't it was good. Danny McBride was fun. I will not though. see it. Even Danny McBride oh. couldn't do it. Was, 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 there was no reason for him to be in that movie. Oh. Thank God oh. I saved myself a little oh. bit. Because I said that yesterday, Hope too. he that saved himself. A little bit. Jimmy, uh, not so much. But I wasn't, I, it wasn't attacking Danny. I was just saying that it was, there was nothing he could do in this movie. Yeah. I, I want, hated it that much. I want to play the clip from yesterday again, and I want to listen for Jimmy. Oh, right. That's true. I want to hear what, what Jimmy said. I did say, uh, uh, here's, all right, here's where I was slightly <laughs> phony. <laughs> Perhaps I was a little closer to your complete phoniness than I'd like to acknowledge. I, I did say, with enthusiasm, oh, I forgot you were in that movie, which implies, through my faggoty lilt, that I enjoyed the movie. Yeah. You know what? So I was a little phony, but I was just, we, I couldn't, I didn't say it. We'll go back to yesterday again. So you heard the two clips, me and uh, Jimmy hating the fucking movie. Yes. And now back to yesterday again with Danny McBride in studio. Just wondered if uh, working with George Clooney is as good as everybody says it is, or if he's, uh, if he's kind of a douchebag. No, he was, he was totally cool. You know, that, that movie up in the air that I did with him. I never had met him before. I did, you know, and I literally walked Holy onto the shit. set. I forgot, forgot you were in that. Yeah. I Fuck. love that fucking, fucking movie. Fucking Oscar nominated movie. Huh? I forgot all about that. We haven't talked to you uh, since then. I forgot about Up in the Air. Jeez. It's a great movie. <laughs> uh, fucking, fucking, fucking Oscar winning movie. I Oscar said it nominated. three, four Nom nominated, times. Yeah. Hmm. The fuck? You were really just like, wow, is this the best movie ever? I must have had an aneurysm or something. Oh, what happened? Jesus. Holy crap. What and then a it's phony. just like, this piece of shit. Fucking phony. <laughs> I love it. I'm embarrassed. Come on, that's funny. Oh my God. Love it when wasn't shit even like close. that happens. It was the complete no. opposite. Complete opposite. So do I like it? No. I don't even hate know. It. You no. hate it. It sucked a pile of dicks. <laughs> I'm going to watch it again now because now I got to figure out if I liked it or hate it. You hated it. I hated it? Of course you did. It stunk. 